Hi guys, I've been given this question by a student of mine. Um, it's a physics question regarding kinetic and potential energy. So the question says, uh, for a roller coaster to make it round a vertical loop, it must be going at a minimum speed based on the loop. If the loop is a circle with radius 15 metres, how fast must the roller coaster car be going at the bottom of the loop to make it around the entire loop? Okay, so basically if the betting man in, in me says that the, the student of mine uh, was having a problem with the fact that we're not given any weights, like any masses to be perfectly honest, because the potential and kinetic energy formulas that we're going to be using in this question, we've got energy kinetic is equal to one half mv squared and the potential energy formula is equal to mgh. So the fact that we're not given any masses in the question I think would have thrown him a little bit. So what we're going to do here is we've got, we'll have a look at the situation. We've got a, a car that's going to be rocketing in this way and it's going to go around the loop and it's going to keep going. So it says the minimum speed. So the minimum speed is going to be at a point when when we come around here, if you go any slower, you're going to fall down. So basically what's got to happen here is you've got two forces acting on the guy here. You've got, if we ignore friction anyway, we've got the force due to gravity, which is coming down. And we've got the force... Um, due to his uh, centrifugal accel centripetal acceleration, sorry, um, which is going up, and they have to cancel each other out. So basically, at this point here, we'll call it a point one. At point one, so at one, the acceleration we'll call it the centripetal has to equal g, which is the gravitational acceleration at the minimum speed. So what happens is he'll feel weightless here at the minimum speed. Okay, so as a result we've got to figure out how fast he's going to be going at one so this will work. So that's the first point of um, um, part of our problem. We've got to actually figure out how fast he's going at the top of our loop. So what we do is we go okay for AC has to equal G so what we're going to do is we're going to write we know that the centripetal acceleration is equal to V squared divided by R so what we're going to do is we're going to make centripetal acceleration equal to whatever our acceleration is due to gravity which on earth is 9.81 this roller coaster is not on Mars so that's going to be equal to the velocity squared divided by the radius which we're told is 15 so a little bit of algebra and you'll have the velocity is going to be equal to the square root of 9.81 times 15. Cool. So, and that is equal to 12.13. So that's how fast he's got to be going at the top of the loop for him to not fall on his head. Okay, so what we have to then do is we have to figure out, okay, this is where the kinetic and the, the kinetic and the potential energy is going to come in. So at the top of the loop, we've got a mixture of, I'll just change colors for a second. At the top of the loop, we've got a mixture of kinetic and potential energy. But at the bottom of the loop, i.e. here, or whatever, or here, if we ignore friction, here we just have kinetic energy. So he gains potential energy up here. So what we have to do is to start with, we have to work out what his total energy is at the top of the loop. So let's do that over here. So the energy total is going to be equal to the kinetic energy that he has due to his speed plus the potential energy that he has due to his height. Cool. So what we're going to do 
is we know that his kinetic energy is going to be based on this speed. So now here's where the mass is going to start to come in. So this is where uh, the kid would have had a bit of problems and gone, well, what the hell have I got to do now? Well, I could show you a long-winded algebraic proof, but what happens is the masses can just be an arbitrary number because in the end, all the masses cancel each other out. So what we're going to do is we're just, to, for, for computation's sake, we're going to have the mass equal to 1. So our total energy is going to be equal to our kinetic energy, which is going to be 1 half 1, which is m, we've decided, times the velocity squared, which is 12.13 squared, plus our potential energy, which is equal to mgh, which we've just said that our mass is now 1. We know that g is 9.81. And our height is going to be 2 times the radius, or the diameter of our loop. So that's going to be 30. Cool. So our total energy at the top of the um, loop is going to be equal to 367. Eight, seven, five. Now these are like arbitrary joules, to be perfectly honest, because our mass is arbitrary. So per kilo, he'd have that many joules, but it doesn't really matter. As long as the mass that we use for him at the bottom of the loop is the same as the mass that we use for him at the top of the loop, it doesn't matter. So what we now can do is we know, due to the law of conservation of energy, so that's one of a big part of this as well. So we have to take into consideration or just appreciate the law of conservation of energy conservation of energy and hopefully all you guys would know that that just basically means that energy cannot be created or destroyed, it just changes its state. So what we're going to do then is so we know that if the total energy at the top of the loop is equal to 367.875, then the energy at the bottom of the loop has to be equal to 367.875. So we're going to, we'll call this spot 2. So our energy total at 2 is going to have to be equal to 367.875 joules. Okay, so we've also like been through the fact that at the bottom here, his height, his height down here is equal to zero. He's traveling along the ground. So as a result, he has no potential energy. So this has to equal E as usual, a makeup of his kinetic energy plus his potential energy. We know that because his height is zero, that his potential energy is going to be equal to zero. So that's going to be just EK plus zero. So what we do is we just make, we use the kinetic energy being equal to 367.875. So we've got EK, which is equal to one half times the cart's arbitrary mass, which is just 1, times its velocity squared has to equal the energy total at the top, which is 367.875. So what we can do is the 1 is just going to be, it's not going to do anything to it because that's why we use the 1, so it doesn't actually play a part. To, we get the half over by multiplying by 2, and then we can find that the velocity at the bottom, we'll call it the velocity at 2, has to be equal to the square root of 2 times 367.875. And we find that to be 27.12. meters per second to the negative one. 
So you can see that the way that this question will throw most people is the fact that there are no masses in the, it doesn't tell us what the mass of this cart is. So you'll instantly go, well, I can't use kinetic and potential energy here. But what happens in a question like this is because the mass of the cart is the same in the bottom situation as it is at the top of the loop, the mass is arbitrary. The guy could weigh one kilo, the guy could weigh 57 kilos, the guy could weigh 200 kilos. It doesn't matter because the masses, if we were to show how the algebra works, just cancel each other out. So what you can do is if you're not given a mass in a situation like this, pick an arbitrary mass, which makes your calculations easy. I pick one because you don't pick zero because that doesn't work. Don't be silly. Just pick an arbitrary mass, which makes your calculations easy, and then do exactly what you would normally do. In this case, what we had to do is we had to figure out the minimum speed. So to start with, we had to work out how fast he had to be going around here so he wouldn't fall down. We calculated that using the fact that his centripetal acceleration had to be equal to gravity. We worked out his speed. Then from that speed, we worked out his kinetic energy. What we then did is we found out an, the, his total energy by adding it to the potential energy that he gained from gaining the height up the loop and got a total energy figure here. From that total energy figure, we used the law of conservation of energy and we could determine that if the energy is 367 at the top, it has to be 367 at the bottom. So what we did is we said, well, 367 at the bottom is equal to a makeup of kinetic and potential energy. Because he's at the bottom of the loop and there is no potential energy, because there is no height, it's just 367.875 is equal to our kinetic energy. We then put all the um, stuff that we know into the kinetic energy equation and then we're able to do some simple algebra and then come out with our final solution of 27.12 metres per second. So I hope that video helped. And um, if you have any issues, if you want to me to solve anything for you, just send me a message, um, put it on my wall or any, something like that, and I'll be happy to have a go at it for you. All right, thanks.